Hi guys, good evening. Hi Wilbert, hi David. Hello teacher, good evening. How are you? Uh, fine teacher, but I am very fun. <laughs> Being at the home all day. In the home all the day. <laughs> I think the everybody, home, yeah. right? Like everybody's so bored of being home in quarantine, not even, it, you guys haven't been able, not even to go to the pharmacy or a local store or the supermarket, right? Everybody's afraid of the police and the guards and and everything, right? Fatima, good evening. Yeah. David, good evening. Uh, for example, good evening, today, good evening. How are you guys? I'm very well, and you, teacher, how are you doing? Good. I did my challenge today. Remember my yesterday challenge? I did it today with my son. Oh, really? <laughs> and I shared it. I'm sorry. I shared it on my on my WhatsApp status. So if you see it. Oh. <laughs> It's there. I share. I had to right. do it. I was like, I had the song here all day, and I said, I have to do it. I have to do it. So, I shared it. So, if you have me on your WhatsApp, you're gonna see on my status. That's a video. I, I I I had a class. I usually have a class at 4 p.m. And so I said, okay, minutes before my class, let's do. You know, let's. My son wanted to record it, and now he wants to record another one with you know clapping like a fricey kind of exercise. But it's good because that way, you know, I don't feel the day go by so long, right? I don't feel the quarantine that much sometimes because there's a lot of things to do <laughs> with kids. Okay. When they're around. <laughs> but guys, so today we have been talking about holidays. We have been talking about celebrations. We have been talking and learning the difference between, well, not only holidays, but the difference between holidays, celebrations, traditions. But today we're going to be talking about customs. Okay. So customs, do you have a particular or unique custom in your house? Like, is there something very particular, like a habit, or something very particular that you guys do in your house and it's a must. Can you tell me examples? Or give me examples? Uh, I think everyone is uh, on the table, around the table, everyone. Could okay. be a custom. Yeah, that's a custom, but is there like a particular custom that you have in your house and maybe no one else in another house will have it? That's like only whenever you go to your house, that's something that happens only in your house. Something very particular from your family, like a custom that you have in your family. Hmm. Can you think of something? I'll give you an example. In my house, we, we usually, um, for Christmas or for New Year's, we usually have the custom of having at 12 a.m., right, like at midnight, we usually have 12 grapes. We eat 12 grapes really fast. And after every grape, we ask for we ask for a wish, so we have we ask for twelve wishes. Uh, so that's like a particular custom that my mom taught us since I was a very little girl. And so every Christmas or every Christmas Eve, because it's midnight, we would do that. Like we would uh, eat twelve grapes one by one, but after each one, we would ask for a wish. That's a custom. In, I don't know if it only happens in my house. At least I only saw it in my house. Whenever I visited anybody else, they didn't have it. Do you have a particular habit? Not only for a holiday, but something particular that happens in your house or somewhere there. Can you tell me or share with me? 
maybe with my family. Okay. Uh, we use to um take when somebody is um the birthday of someone of my family so we all birthday. get together or we all gather on my parents house because my my sister and i live in, apart with our families we gather on, on my parents house and always uh, in the right day of your birth is it has to be the day of your birth no no uh, later no after not in a month day. okay no 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 just the day because i think that is if you don't have a cake that day is not your birth it's not <laughs> your your that's the custom mm -hmm. yeah so um sometimes uh someone is missing but uh, we try to do that always because it feels good and we make the the person that is um festive yeah the feel person was festive uh -huh, feel good yeah. okay yeah I guess it's it's a very unique custom. It has no matter if it's Wednesday or Monday or Sunday, but you guys gather that no, precise yeah. day. It doesn't really matter the day, but it has yeah. to be on that on the birth date. Yeah, we try to do that. And by the way, there's a difference, and I want to clarify. There's a difference. We were taught by teachers, you know, when is your birthday? And actually, birthday is the day you celebrate your birth date. So there's a difference between birth date and birthday. Birthday is a celebration, or my birthday was um, three weeks ago, for example. Um, when is your birth date? It's different than birthday. So one thing is birthday, that's the day you were born, and birthday is more like the celebration, okay? So there's a difference between either or. Okay. okay. Very good. Anybody else wants to share a particular custom, a very unique custom you have with your families before we get and learn about Customs, unique customs around the world. You guys have a particular custom with your families? No customs? <clears throat> no, maybe maybe the same. Uh, we, we get together for everybody's birthday and but the, the the difference between other families is that my my family and my wife family um, gets together both family for for every for every birthday birthday mm -hmm. birthday yeah so yeah, I think that that's something that's that, unique yeah. Uh -huh. Because usually if it's on your on your side of the family, you, it would only be for your side of the family. But it's right. very nice. You're integrating both families together for one. So that's super nice. That's nice. Yeah. And it tends to happen that you gather at your parents' house, right? I, I've noticed Fatima shared that at her parents' house. In your case, I don't know who's house. But there's always like a designated home where you guys would gather to celebrate, right? There's always like, uh, let's gather at this house i don't know if it's the biggest or if it's the the one you guys have had the habit or custom to gather yeah, they, very small in my, in my case we we are uh, rotating i don't know if you say it like that uh, rotating we rotate yeah um but it, it's also only in, in four four houses that, that is the, the biggest houses is where, where we are celebrating. Okay. And it's for birthday, for Christmas, for any celebration that we get together. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, great. Well, today, guys, we're going to be talking about unique celebrations around the world. I have a video, but I also have 
a document that I want to share with you. Let me check if I am able to share right now. One minute while I share my screen with you. Okay, so I found this article of the 10 most interesting customs around the world. Okay, so in Switzerland, and I wanted to share the first one. In Switzerland, they have this honesty shopping custom. So what is that? I'm going to show you the audio. It's called honesty shopping. So it's a place where you go, and I thought it was really interesting, this one. Okay, so these are like some of the places where you go, and you put money on an envelope. You just you look at the products on this specific place, and they have to be called the honesty shops or shopping, and they sell various items. And you go and you look at the at the items. They don't have a price. You put the price to the items. So you go, you take an envelope, and you place the money inside, and you give it to the person who's actually selling. It's like a garage sale sort of. I guess that some of the items that they sell are new. Some of them are used and some of them are old or antique. So it's really interesting because you're not going to, like you always, people always ask for a price. So how much is it? And they will tell you, oh, $5, etc. But in this case, you yeah. just give them what you consider. It's the price of that object. So I thought that was a very interesting custom from Switzerland. And it's very common that they do this honesty shopping. That's why it's called honesty shopping. So you're being honest with yourself saying, this is how much I can afford for this particular item. Have you ever heard about this custom before anywhere else in the world? No, no. never teacher. Very it's super interesting. interesting, right? Because yeah. you're not going to do uh, that. Well, uh, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, that wouldn't work here in El Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it has happened with me personally, whenever people ask me how much do I charge for, and I want to confess, whenever people ask me, how much do you charge for your classes? And I tell them, maybe because I'm very passionate about it, I always tell them, lo que Dios ponga en su corazón. So people call, they start, you know, they start telling me, oh, your academy should be called lo que Dios ponga en su corazón. If, if somebody was to come to me and like, you know, it's up to you, you decide how much you, you can pay me for the class you just try it out and then tell me how much you can pay for it right um so i don't know i i kind of work that way my father taught me into that so it's like a very particular custom that i have as a teacher but i really like this one nice. and i relate it a lot to it because people actually put place some money inside an envelope and just say okay I'll, I'll, I'll give you this for your lamp and lucky the guys if they get more than expected because you have an idea how much yeah. a lamp can be but then if they get more, wow, that's amazing, right? So that's why it's called honesty. So you have to be honest with your heart. Mm -hmm. So that was the first one. It was a very interesting one. Um, the second one that got my attention, this happens in Switzerland. Um, tranquilo, I didn't look for that one. Um, oh, in, in um, China, I don't know if you know about this word, you know how whenever you, you're eating, because you eat soup, whenever it has food on it, um, like noodle soup, like maruchan, sometimes mm -hmm. we do that mm -hmm. sound. Yes. Right? Sometimes you make that. And we consider that impolite or like, shh, you have to eat with your mouth. Yeah. So right <laughs> here in, in our Latin American countries, we consider and we tell our kids, don't do that. That's super, or spaghetti, right? Don't do that. That's super improper guess what in china and in japan if you don't do this huh. you're saying that the soup that you're having for dinner it's really bad so you need to slurp that's the sound the, the sound that you make you need to slurp in order to tell the chef at a restaurant that his soup it's super good or so you need to make that sound and I related it to the movie Ratatouille and where the, there was this guy trying the soup and he actually made the sound of, and that's, uh. it's, it shows appreciation for the soup that you're having if it's really good. Did you know that? No. No, teacher. No. 
Okay. Um, let me. What is the word, teacher? What is the I'm word of you the, right yeah, the name of the sound? I'm, I'm about to tell you. It's called, hold on, just give me one minute here because I lost my page. Here it is. It's called slurping. Slurping uh, noodles, China. Slurping, it's a that's Slurping. That. Okay. What, what's the word in Spanish? You got me there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Guys, can you help me? How do you say the sound that you make Sorber. whenever? Sorber. 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 Mm -hmm. Sorber. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's a good one. Sorber. Okay. So whenever you do that sound, so you have so remember if you get the opportunity to travel to Asia, you have to do it, guys. It's not impolite. So that's one of their customs, unique customs. You have to do it. And if you make the sound, the more you know, if it's delicious, of course. If it's not, then you wouldn't really do the sound. So remember. Hey, how do you say cemento noodles right now? <laughs> I just I I I don't know. I just had um call from noodles oh a call for noodles i just had a call like i just had a call for noodles a call? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. i just had a call okay. that would be a phrase like hey, i just had a call for ice cream right now for example like oh i wish i had uh, okay. ice cream or i wish i had noodles right now mm -hmm. i just had a okay. call for so that's another question of, yes tell me how do you say buen provecho enjoy your meals Enjoy your meal, yeah. Because, you're bon, right. appet yeah. In, because bon appetit, it's French. Or Italian. No, it's French. Bon appetit. I think it's French. Uh -huh. So enjoy your meals. And it's a phrase that actually not everybody uses. Americans don't uh -huh. use it. They all say bon appetit. But it's actually the right way to say it. Enjoy your meals. Enjoy your meals. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Enjoy your meals. So this is the second one. Okay, so these are unique customs around the world that sometimes we just don't know, right? The other one um, that I got my attention, oh, this one, South Korea, tipping. Um, can somebody help me read this one while I look for the image? Number four? Okay. Four. Mm -hmm. Number four, can you help me read? Okay. South Korea, not typing. Tipping, tipping. Tipping, not tipping. For mm -hmm. someone who was raised in the United States and has worked in the food service industry throughout university, tipping is in my blood. I want to tip everyone as a way of showing my gratitude for gratitude. their mm -hmm. gratitude for their service and solidarity with them in their work, but no sooner did I attempt to display my gratitude in a charming cafe in Seoul. So then like Alma. So so then my tip was snatched quickly by my host with a sharp glare. Like <gasps> like that. That's uh -huh. a sharp glare, like with admiration. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. In South Korea, along with many other countries, employees in the food service industry are given fair wages. Wages? Wages and Which is take, a salary. Okay, fair wages and take pride in their work. And it is insulting to attempt to tip them. A habit and concept maybe the world would do well to consider. Imagine they get a very good wage. A wage is another way to say salary. Um, a sharp glare is like, oh, you're insulting me. You're insulting my country. So, because then again, we sometimes we don't know. This is like pop culture. Um, mm -hmm. we're, here, I don't think we do it that much unless we had very good customer service. But we don't have that habit of, it's a must that you need to give people tips. Even mm -hmm. though there's many places where they're starting to accept them. Um, but in the United States, it's a must. You have to give tips where, wherever you go. People are so used to it because then again, their wage is one thing and their tips actually compensate for the wage they earn. 
in dollars. But in China, in Asia, especially in South Korea, it's an, it's an, it's an offense to actually give somebody a tip. Now, people Americanized, let's call it, Americanized places like a coffee shop that it's like Starbucks in South Korea, they might take it. But like other places that are not that Americanized or that they have that American influence in them would feel offended if you actually tip them. Tip them is to give them tips uh, like a dollar or five dollars, etc. So imagine so it's something, it's, it's part of their customs. They don't take tips from people. They feel offended if you give them a tip. Now I ask you, have anybody in your life for any reason given you money just because like, oh here, five dollars for it. I don't know, taking me to, giving me right to work for one month. I don't know, have you ever give, have you ever received money from someone for X, Y reason, a favor or uh, taking them from one place to another? Yeah. I don't know, never? Not even a dollar? Never for washing teachers. their cars. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just thinking of. Okay. Never teacher, but I I I knew about a case in um, a mate in the work. Uh, some uh, in the airport, one uh, woman uh, asked asked him about uh, uh, where. She uh, find a, a um, la carretilla. Oh, the yeah. I'll tell you in a bit. It's called the uh, trolley. Come on, see. Hold on. Yeah. No. Yeah. Trolley. This one. But this is the one for the trolley. Uh huh. The trolley, and uh. This he, one. he, the uh huh, this, this roll, the trolley, and he, he was walking, and uh, when he helped that woman, uh, she gave him uh, five dollars, <laughs> but he um, helped. helped her, helped her. Uh, with any not intention, intention uh, no yeah. intention for money but yeah. he, she she gave him five dollars and this is what i was telling you because they're so used to then again this is how americans think and that's it's very normal for them to okay do you, can you take me to the nearest atm can you take me where can i find the soda machine and they would tip you for you just showing them where places are or just like oh it's here oh, okay here thank you they're so used to tipping that you would feel like oh my god especially for people that actually work at the airport that they receive a lot of people coming and going from you know the u.s especially and but we feel i guess your mate felt like oh, quite not offended but surprised because not everybody would give you just money for showing somebody you were right mm -hmm. i don't know okay i just I don't know. It's just, it's just strange for us, I guess. It's very, because we do things from the bottom of our hearts. We actually do it because we just, we give right to people and we don't tell, no, 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 it's nothing. We're not over, right? <laughs> we just like do things in a, in a, just because you feel like it and you want to help, right? But not because you want to receive money. Okay. So that was something interesting. Um, the other interesting one. Oh, this is a noodle slurping that I was telling you what we're talking about. Um, and I think it's this one. Oh, I don't know if it was this one. Oh, this one. This is the one that I like. Can you help me read Iceland? Who wants to help me read Iceland? Yeah, mm -hmm. me. Okay. Iceland Christmas Eve books given. Oh, we obsess. We obsess. We obs ah, we obsess over the eternal question of Christmas gifts. Do we spend tons, of, tons of money on new technology for our loved ones, or just stick with the always saved gift card? Will they read 
too much into a Fitbit. Iceland has solved this problem with the Christmas Eve tradition of giving a book. After everyone unwraps the books, they spend the evening reading together. Iceland has preserved the culture of books in this beautiful Christmas custom, which many countries will do well to emulate. So for every Christmas Eve, which is the 24th, people stop giving Fitbits, Fitbits uh, trackers or uh, technological gadgets. They started, they stop giving uh, the typical gifts that you would expect for Christmas and they started giving out books because the tradition was to read a book um, for Christmas Eve. So you would actually spend all your Christmas night because it's Iceland, of course, there's a lot of ice, right? So you cannot really go out and do anything. So they would spend their time reading. I wanna show you some of the pictures I, I found. What is Fitbit? Oh, Fitbit is the tracker, like this uh, watch. It's like a tracker that actually checks your heartbeat, the rate of your heartbeat, and the steps that you take oh, all yeah. day. Like a smart watch. watch. Yeah. Like a, it's like a smart watch, but the brand is called Fitbit. It's usually just to check on your blood pressure, <coughs> um, your heartbeat rate, and it actually gives you like a, I'll show you in a bit. I'll show you images of the Fitbit um, in a bit. I'll show you so I, you have a better idea. So this is what they do. So they give out, they give out, um, books for that at night and they have it with hot chocolate because then again it's very cold country right so families spend together on a christmas you know reading in iceland they spend reading the new book they receive kids adults everybody so it, it becomes a, a very nice custom they have for christmas eve so they stop giving out gifts did you know that No. Or do you know any other country that has a custom like this, that they have another custom like this for Christmas or any other habit like this? Hmm? No? No. And I felt it was really interesting. Some of them are really interesting. Some of others are not like that. And I wanted to show you a Fitbit. It's like, a, the difference is that it's not really, it's like this, it's like a smartwatch with the difference that it also, it all, it only, uh, it only shows you like more like into the you know see it only has a few details and it only checks your pulse or your heartbeat etc and you can track it with your phone you can actually check how many and this is recommended usually for people who have problems with their heart or that they need to exercise to keep track of how many steps they do etc and it gives you like alerts even to drink water and stuff so drink water or walk, stand up and things like that. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really cool, but it's mainly for this, just for that. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so that, that was it. I think those were the, my top ones from the ones I read. I will send you, I'll send you the link. So you, for those of you who want to start reading more, I'll, I'll send you the link that way you can read this cool article later on, okay? Okay. Teacher. Okay. Okay, and the other thing that I wanted to share with you was this. So this is strange customs around the world that are still happening. This was up to 2019. So we're just gonna go one by one, just a few of them, and then you're gonna tell me if you consider their nice customs or not really nice customs, or are they myths? You know, like wearing red, that's a custom that they have. If you wear red for Christmas, you're attracting this. If you put a bag outside the door and you know, you're gonna have many trips, uh -huh around the you know those are like some customs that some people believe in world in the transition between child and adult most experience a few growing pains along the way but these are nothing compared to what is customary for some young boys in the amazon to go through first they must get bullet ants and place them in a pair of gloves then they put these on 20 different times dancing as they are stung by the ants over and over again the pain from the ants is described as 30 times worse than the sting of a bee and each glove is swarming with them once they've successfully done this, they can consider themselves a man. A Imagine that. So oh. <laughs> they put ants Terrible. in a bag in your hand no. and you have to like. Oh. And no. then, yeah, 
so when you're moving from becoming a child into a man, wow. Custom. Crazy. Oh. I know, custom. <laughs> Another extreme type of test is expected of young boys on a Vanuatan island. They must prove their ability to conquer fear by a practice called land diving. This requires climbing a 100 foot tower of wood and jumping headfirst down to the ground, escaping certain death only because of vines tied around their ankles. In Indonesia, young people of both genders. So they, it's like bungee jumping, but instead of throwing yourself to an empty place, you throw yourself to the land. So you have to fall to the land. And if you survive that with no problem, then you become a man. <laughs> oh. hmm. Or die. I know. It's crazy. It's incredibly crazy. Participate in a unique custom of their own to transition from wild children to being considered fully human. It requires that their canine teeth are ground down. This is done without any form of pain relief and they are expected to sit quietly without a sound. It's believed that pointy teeth will prevent them from reaching heaven as they'll be mistaken for wild animals. Oh. Did you see that? So you know how kids have the, the some of the teeth so they are removed from their mouths, that way they, but with no, you know, they're forced pretty much whenever they're not ready. And because, you know, usually you wait for the fairy to, to come and take the, once it's ready, right? But in this case, they're forcing it. And so no anesthesia whatsoever, wow. Of course, with time, children become adults, and most adults will at some point search for love. Beware if you're unlucky in this area and remain single in Denmark. In some areas, the custom is to go up to anyone unmarried on their 25th birthday and fling handfuls of cinnamon on them. If you think that's bad, just wait until you're still single at the age of 30. This is Okay, so imagine Denmark. So it's a custom to throw... If somebody's single has not been married by the age of 25, they throw synonym. You know what synonym is? Canela. Canela. Ha but like not the typical canela that you have, you mix with your synonym that you mix. It's actually raw, like it's not really prepared. So it's very, so the, the smell must be very intense and it makes you sneeze. Mm. This is when you'll get covered in spicy bursts of pepper. Germany has its own strange customs in this area too. When single German men turn 30 in Bremen, they must sweep cathedral steps to organ music until a girl takes pity on them and gives them a kiss. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Who's 30 here? Raise your hand if you're 30. Are you in your 30s? Not yet? <laughs> Not yet. Not oh, yet. Theory. <laughs> but this applies to more, more than 30. Oh, yeah. more yeah. than 30. <laughs> so if you reach your 30s, you have to sweep. And then somebody has to kiss you. And then that's a custom in this country. And say, <laughs> that's oh, the it's an easy way to. A pity. Ah, oh, yeah. pobrecito. So it's like, oh, he's doing, you know, he's doing the entire building by himself. So let me go give him a kiss. And then you're like, you're safe. Bye. Once that happens. But don't think those that find love are in the clear. Once a more widespread custom, but still practiced by the Tujia people of China, a woman must cry for a whole month before her wedding day. Once it's dark, she'll walk around and sob for an hour each night. After 10. Yeah, I have heard about Asia. They really have, if you have had the opportunity to watch Geisha, the movie. Um, they actually have very, they're very harsh with women. And so I imagine they have to cry for an entire month before their wedding day. That's awkward. Yeah. No, you cry after. <laughs> I guess it's very easy because usually they're, one of their characteristics is that they do not know how to smile. It's all the opposite. So you have to work that positive side. They're very, they're, depressed people somehow so they're very sad all the time they keep themselves in you know in a sad mood all the time i don't know why and it's very hard for them to actually uh, laugh I, I read and i saw a video that they actually go to school to learn how to smile if you see if you notice they don't and they don't have effective um 
they don't show affection in public. So it's very difficult for you to see a couple of Asians kissing or showing affection, hugging or holding hands. It's very difficult. So I guess that because of the type of life they have, they have. Yeah, I don't know. And the way they force their feet too, for the, for women to actually, you know, for their food to actually adapt to the type mm -hmm. of, I don't know, it's, 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 they suffer a lot, you know, they suffer a lot. I've noticed that. So 10 days her mother that. will join in and cry along. Yet 10 days after this, her grandmother will start crying too. If the bride has any sisters or aunts, you guessed it, they must also follow along. This is meant to make the wedding day seem just that much happier by comparison. In Germany, it's customary to throw a Polterabend party a few weeks before a wedding. During this, guests show up and break a bunch of porcelain and other pottery. It's then... Okay, so I've, I've seen this custom somewhere else in the world. I just don't remember where. Where people take, you know, the expensive dishes, those expensive dishes that you have Greeks, adorned. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I they're think very that, expensive. That, 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 Greeks. And they throw them just right but they're very expensive and they um, i mean i know they're very expensive so i'm thinking wow and they throw them and just break them and yeah is, is the people that use something here uh judes judes yeah it's not the jude one. Jude's. Mm -hmm. oh yeah but in this case it's in where was it i i just forgot where was it germany then this is in germany, germany. oh dinamar yes. No, I think it's Germany. Germany is Germany. Okay. Yeah, Germany. Oh, Polter. This. Polter. Polter Ben. Polter Ben. So it's this Polter Ben. It's right? porcelana. Uh huh. But it's, well, here it shows like the regular one. What I do know it said is the expensive one. The one that it has a little designs and that just for one dish or one plate would cost like 25 or $30. I don't know, right? I guess. Those I are like know. super, super expensive. I don't know. I just guess they're very, very expensive because they're unique. Strange custom. Ready to throw a Polterabend party a few weeks before a wedding. During this, guests show up and break a bunch of porcelain and other pottery. It's then up to the future husband and wife to clean up the mess. This can last all night with guests continuing to smash cups, plates, and bowls after the couple has just cleaned everything up. It's believed this will prepare the two for the messes that life will eventually throw at them. In Scotland, there's a similarly messy custom known as the blackening. It's when the future bride and groom are surprised, tied up, and blackened. In other words, they're covered in flour, custards, dirt, or soot to become as dirty as possible. After they take a shower or two, it's believed they'll have more luck. It's like, I guess it's a different representation of what they do whenever you go to mass and you see the, the rope or, around both of you, like to make that union, right? But they do it beforehand, before the bride and groom, by the way, bride and groom get married before they become husband and wife. What do you think about this custom? I didn't understand that, teacher. So they, what they do is that uh, they get them into dirty things to check uh -huh. if they're able to actually support not only the smells, but actually to see if they're able to stay close one another in bad time. Oh, okay. So that's why they okay. had a lot of things here. Uh huh. What they do here, I guess, and I was, I was sharing is that Whenever you go to a wedding, they usually have, I don't know the word in Spanish. Arras? No, it's not arras. Lasso. Lasso. And they put it around you and the person making like an H shape. That way, you know, you're representing that you're becoming one. So what they're trying to represent there is to see that you guys are actually going to make it together through bad times prior to the wedding. Okay. Could be. I don't know. What do you guys think about all these traditions? Are they crazy enough? What do you weird. think? Weird, strange, unique, yeah, strange the, the, teacher. The first, the first one that were very strange, very crazy. Necessary, I think. Strange traditions, right? Can you yeah. think? Can you think of other traditions that you have heard? 
Can you tell or, me? Or, or here in El Salvador, is, is there any traditions? Do we have any traditions? I've heard about the grapes. For example, my mother used to do that, and I was sharing at the beginning of the class, like the 12 grapes at midnight and then wishing one wish after another. But yeah. it's in, within the regular circumstances. <clears throat> but do you know of other traditions or customs? Uh, when the wife throw the flowers. Uh-huh. Not everybody mm. does it, right? So why do mm. they do it? What's what's the meaning of it? Like like the girl that catches the the flowers will be the next woman to get married. Do you know if it actually happens or it's just like a myth? <laughs> yeah, it's a myth. A myth. <laughs> <laughs> I catch I think it's, it's more psychological. <laughs> I take psychological. <laughs> and I'm single. Uh-huh. So you you caught. You caught twice. Two. Twice, twice, yes. Okay. It's called a flower, oh, by the way, it's called a flower bouquet. Ramo. Yeah. Uh -huh, bouquet. I think it's like this, bouquet. I'm sorry, my dyslexia right now. It's a flower bouquet. This one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard another tradition. Uh, tell me. In when uh, some couple in uh, get married in a, I can I can remember now. Como se dice pueblo. In a town. Okay, when a couple get married in a town, they have they used to walk from the church to the, the reception place. Ah, I don't like that. Well, true. I I I I was um I, I was in a wedding where that thing happened. Uh -huh. Why do they do that? What does it represent? It represents that the, it's a uh, like a presentation from the couple that now become become becomes becomes one, I guess, or mm -hmm. to show as, as the father's the family. Person. As the father says in the in the in the wedding, and now present you, Mister and Missus, something. Okay. It's like a tradition that uh, everybody in the it town is. now that they are married. Uh huh. Mm, true. I guess. I guess. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I didn't know about that one. That's a new one for me. I do know people that actually um go. Um, how do you call this? No, that they throw, not that they go, that they throw. That's another custom, not in every country. Sometimes they do bubbles, sometimes they do, I don't know, the flower rice. petals. But why do we do rice and beans, right? Uh -huh. Because it's a representation for marriage. But you wouldn't see this anywhere else. Like it doesn't exist in, for example, you, you ask. Somebody else, I guess, from another country, and there's a casamiento, yeah, like rice and beans together. I don't know how they call it, it because it, it actually has a it has a, a, a another name, gallo pinto, I think, in other gallo in other pinto. places. Yeah, gallo pinto. But we call it casamiento. <laughs> so that's a custom too. Any other thing yeah. that you can think of, or any other custom that we have that might be unique? Um, I don't know what is the name of the thing that use the 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 wife in the leg. It's like a lace that in the party after the the wedding ceremony, uh, the the husband uh, takes off that lace of the leg of the oh, wife. Garter. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That. Wedding order, this one. Wedding guard. Order. Okay. Did you see how I wrote it? Whenever you were telling, I didn't know the word. I didn't remember, or maybe I did. And and I wrote what you just said, the bride, the lace in her leg, the name. So I wrote the words and actually Google came up with the answer. So this is what mm -hmm. I want you to do whenever you don't know the word. Okay, no translator. Okay. Remember? So wedding order, okay. So what does it represent when you take it off and, and what do you do <laughs> with it? What's the meaning? I for really word? don't know. <laughs> what do you guys know? Guys, you, you're married. Tell us. What's the, what's the meaning for a garter? 
The same of a woman, but in men. The, like the uh, man flower catch, bouquet. Catch it, yes. The man that catch it is the next to get married. Oh. Uh -huh. It's for that that okay. uh, no one no one wants to catch it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. It's consummating their marriage. That's what it actually means. Consummation. So both. So that's different because this is cons consummation and the flower bouquet, it's the next one to be there will be or the future bride per se. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Any other tradition that we might have? No? Um, it's Salvadoran customs. No? None other that you might know? The five rolls in Nehapa? That's very good, yeah. That's a tradition too. Mm -hmm. Now, a custom, Los that is, it's an event. Those are events. But those are, remember, we spoke about events, fest, fest, uh, festivals, holidays, but custom, it's something very precise that you do. For example, that could be the event or the festival, but what the custom is, for example, that these guys, the, the participants, that could be a custom, the participants um, will not eat all day that day for that particular, that would be a custom. Something particular mm -hmm. that happens for this event. Oh, maybe can be when in the the Holy Week, mm -hmm. uh, when people make uh, torrejas for that week. Exactly. So that is a custom, and you need to you need for for Holy Week you need to try torrejas. Oh, yeah, I know torrejas. I'm sorry, Mike. Or was ma here, mango. Ay, torrejas, he said. <laughs> Yeah, torrejas, mango or mango, with... or cocotes, and all, so that is a custom. Mm -hmm. So it's necessary that for this period of time, we need to try one of those. So it's a custom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or for example, another custom is that whenever, I don't know, it's, it's very particular, I mean, I've seen it. Uh, for funerals, for the whole event, remember we're talking about the whole event, it doesn't matter if oh, it was well, a last. wake, you would actually have, or for the day of the death, you would have ojuela. Or for funerals at the wake, at la vela, you would, people give tamales, always, for tamales wakes. With coffee. Ah, yeah. It's <laughs> and true. coffee. So it's a, I think it's a custom. Like, okay, so why do, we, why do you give people tamales? Why don't you give them other things? I don't know, sandwiches or anything else. We usually give tamales. <laughs> Or for uh, prayers too, for the rezos, the prayers. Sweet, sweet bread. Tamales mm. and coffee or chocolate. So it's our custom. So it's considered as a custom. Uh -huh. Any other things that you can think of as a custom? This, uh, December 20, uh, uh, December 12th, when the the kids uh, go to the uh, go will go to the church um, like, like Indians dressed dressed as oh, Indians. Dressed as Indians. That's another mm -hmm. custom, and that's very unique from Mexico, from El Salvador, and many other. It's a custom. So to dress up your kids as an Indian or as an as a yeah, as an Indian, and take and present it to to the Virgin and Church. Mm -hmm. It's true. Every twelve, uh -huh. that's a that's a custom. Not everybody does it, but in you know the majority of people believe in it, so it's a custom. Whenever a lot of people believe in something, it becomes a custom, or it's a it's a habit that you do year after after year after year. Anything else that you can think of? I think it's a custom that for Holy Week we make rugs, alfombras. Not oh, many as yes. before, but I think this is like there's no 
procession without a rug. You mm -hmm. need to have a rug. And you have helped, whether you were whenever you were very young, maybe now you still help, etc. But you have done it in a certain point of your life. But I remember that yeah. before, when I was a little girl, people would invest. And I remember that, you know, 24 hours before the day, you would actually be on the streets with your friends, you mm -hmm. know, reserving the space and you would sleep there and camp there and stay there for the night because you don't, mm -hmm. didn't want anybody to actually take away that special spot of the street. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember that. It's just funny. Okay. Do you remember the reading of unique costumes? Do you remember? What was this reading about? Can you tell me, guys? From the article from the platform, Exercise 315, do you guys remember what this unique costumes article was about? Do you guys remember? A little bit. Mm-hmm. Have you guys done this part or not everybody? No, I'm not, not yet. yet. Right now. Okay. If you want, help me read. Well, we've, we're like five minutes away, but let's help me read January 17. Who wants to help me read? Okay, me. Let's do the first one. Mm -hmm. January 17 is St. Anthony's Day in Mexico. It's mm -hmm. a day when people ask for protection for their animals by bringing them to church. But before the animals go into the church, the people usually dress them up in flowers and ribbons. Wow, this is very nice. I didn't know about this unique costume, you see? So this is something very That's particular cute. in Mexico. So they take their animals to church. That's very nice. I didn't know about this one. Okay, very good. Next one, on August 15, who wants to help me read? Me? Um, Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'll do, do. I, I do the, the next one. Well, on August 15 of the lunar calendar, Koreans celebrate Chuseok, mm -hmm. also known as Korean Thanksgiving. It's a day when people give thanks for the harvest. Korean families honor their ancestors by going to their graves to take them rice and fruit and clean the grave Great sites. Time. Very good. Okay, so they do have their Thanksgiving celebration and it's called Chuseok, right? And they're not going to have turkey because they love rice. So, you know, to honor them, they take rice because everything they make, it has mm -hmm. to do something with rice, right? So it's a very nice mm -hmm. uh, celebration. Okay, so this is a unique custom. They take rice and, and fruit and visit their, their grave sites, okay? Very good. Long ago in India, help me read. Okay, long ago in India, a princess who needed help uh, sent her silk bracelet to an emperor. Bracelet. Also, bracelet. Also, he did not arrive in time to help her. He kept the bracelet Bracelet, bracelet, mm -hmm. bracelet as a sign of the bond between them. Today in India, during the festival of Raki, men promise to be loyal to the women. In exchange, the women give them a bracelet of silk cotton or gold thread. Thread, which is ilo. Thread, thread is ilo. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very good tradition. I've, I saw it in the last emperor, I think. So the bracelets are very important for them. So whenever they exchange the bracelet or they give somebody a bracelet, uh, in Gisha too, you can actually see, if they give you a bracelet, that's a symbol that that person will belong to you. I think in the movie Gisha, it, it shows up and you give it in a box and something special and you give the bracelet and then means that that person will belong for to you forever and ever and ever. It doesn't really matter the material. It could be cotton, like it says here. Usually it's, they believe a lot in gold. They, they like gold, so they use gold a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's one of their customs, okay? Number four, one of the biggest celebrations. Who wants to help me read? Uh, me. One, yeah. of the big, one of the biggest celebrations in Argentina is New Year's Eve. On the evening of December uh, 31st, Families get together and have a big meal. 
At midnight, fireworks explode everywhere and continue throughout the night. This is a day when friends and families meet for <clears throat> parties, which last until the next morning. And very good, thank you. And this is very particular in us. Like the, I guess this is goes around Latin America, right? We do this yes. for New Year's. Mm -hmm. So yes. we relate to it, right? Yes. And the last one, on the evening of February. Who wants to help me read? Me? Yeah, go ahead, David. Okay. On the evening of, of February 3rd, people in Japan celebrate the end of winter at the beginning. This is now a sent to boom. Family members throw dried beans around their homes. Showing the blood, the blood in evil spirits out after evil. they throw evil spirits. evil spirits out, evil spirits spirits out after they throw the beans, they pick them up and eat one bean for each year of their age. Wow, this is different. So they throw beans, but we don't know what type of beans. Of course, it could be green beans or I don't know any mm. other type of beans, right? Um, I think that it may be cooked, no? Cooked, the beans. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Or, I don't know, dry, it's yeah. different. And white mm. beans, right? White beans. I don't really like the beans, but then, yeah. It's just a custom. Like we do the rice and beans for casamento, so I guess. Same way. <laughs> Okay, guys, coquetators, thank you very much for joining tonight. You see, la hora se fue volando, right? Um, I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow, same time, right? Thank you so much for joining. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay. By the way, Good I'm going before you Good guys night. leave. Good night, Good night everyone. Uh, uh, before you leave, I'm working on the platform. I already asked the, the developers about the different glitches that you guys are getting, okay? So hopefully I'll have an answer soon on that. But continue posting the screenshots. That way, we get we push them to work on that as well to fix it. Okay. Teacher. Okay, teacher. Thank, Thank you. Good night, guys. Yeah, have a night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a night. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. It's enough right now.